and one of the albums of the year surprisingly had its roots in a classic singles act from the 1980s. Nanorama vibe was girl gang having a great time, and we did have a great time, we really did, until we stopped having a great time. I wanted to write darker stuff, and Sarah and Karen didn't. I had been working with Eric Clapton and done session work for Aretha Franklin. I was, you know, from the R&B kind of soul world. Um, but what we had in common was our drive, you know, to create something interesting. The way we dress is an attempt to project vital part of us that's gone into the music. I mean, in my, in my case, it's kind of like um, a battered old Tinkerbell who's seen better days. Back then, I was living in um, L.A., in the San Fernando Valley, with my then-husband, Dave Stewart. Marcy lived up the road. Whenever Dave and Siobhan would have parties at their house, we'd all end up singing at some point. And Dave was like, I think we should write a beautiful ballad for you. He said, I, you know, how about something like this? And so then I just started writing the first words. If this world is wearing thin And you're thinking of escape Dave went off and Marcy and I did the demo and um, I brought it back at tea time, back to the house and he heard the demo and went, oh, that's a number one record. And I was going, what? Really? Don't think I'll understand Day was inspired by this film called Cat Women of the Moon. It was a 1950s B movie and it was pretty trashy. In the film, this troop of earthlings visit the moon and meet these cat women. The character that I'm playing in the song falls in love with this earthling, so I am begging him to stay with me. Performing on top of the pops was difficult because the song did not really have any tempo and with the crowd cheering and everything going on, it was a few times I felt like I nearly missed the mark. Actually, Marcy killed it. She absolutely killed it. It was an odd track for me as well to perform because um, I waited for half the song before I came in, you know. Me. section was enormously rewarding to perform. <laughs> A chance to be very camp, a little bit scary. <laughs> Originally, the song was in the key of G, but our A&R man, Pete Tong, liked to speed everything up. And back in those days, if you sped things up, the pitch got higher. So I would have to hit a high D sharp above high C.
And for Shakespeare's sister, when it came to making the all-important video for the song, they took further inspiration from Catwomen of the Moon, giving it all a classic movie ballad feel. The kind of thing that keeps you at number one. I do think that Stay belongs in that tradition of big movie ballads. It's grand emotions. It looks like a melodrama, as it is, because it's a B-movie. There's something about that really epic way of making music that suddenly just sort of takes everyone with them. We were at number one with Stay for eight weeks. And I was like, now, is it getting embarrassing? It started to become, mm, we've overstayed our welcome. After eight weeks of Shakespeare's sister. It's right there in front of number one. And it was actually a welcome release by that point.